Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the idea of Cosmic Dawn. The idea behind the beginning of the stars and beginning of the light in the universe. Because today we do believe that at some point in the past, there literally was a time when there was no light. And then there was light. And that light transformed the universe completely, changing it from a relatively dark and somewhat opaque place where no light could actually go through, to the universe that we know today transparent, extremely bright, and full of energy in every direction. But trying to figure out when this cosmic dawn started, or essentially when the universe produced these first stars with the first light, is one of the biggest mysteries for various astrophysicists out there. And unfortunately, it's also a mystery that even today does not really have a very good resolution. But nevertheless, a lot of scientists over the past few years try to get as much data as possible from various telescopes, including of course the Hubble telescope, and try to solve this mystery by using various observations. With one of the most important and one of the most iconic images produced by Hubble a few years ago, the image that we usually refer to as the Ultra Deep Field. And this is, of course, one of the most important images created by Hubble in its lifetime. And so one of the main goals here was always to try to discover some of these earliest and some of these farthest galaxies we've ever seen. And then try to discover how long they've had some of these early stars in them. And so essentially the goal is to find the farthest galaxy and then to try to calculate its age. And this way we can maybe work out when these first stars came into existence. But unfortunately it's not very easy. Even Hubble reached its limits when it comes to certain distances. And although the scientists today expect the James Webb telescope that's going to become operational soon to possibly help us see even farther and find some of these other galaxies, the only way to try to figure all of this out right now is to maybe look at some of the most distant galaxies ever found and to then try to discover their age. Now this is exactly what the scientists behind this paper right here decided to do. They chose six galaxies that were assumed to be some of the most distant ever discovered and used several very well known techniques to re-establish their distance and to also then calculate their age. Which would then allow them to possibly predict when the first stars appeared in the universe. But this is when I became super curious. How could they possibly achieve this? First of all, these galaxies are ridiculously far away. So far away as a matter of fact that this is not at all what they're seeing in their images. The actual appearance of these galaxies is something like this. It's just a few tiny pixels that are barely distinguishable to be a galaxy to begin with. Now here they can obviously do a spectroscopic analysis and discover what kind of light is coming from them, but how can they possibly determine a distance to this and then determine its age? And there's actually a brilliant technique to do all of this, a technique that was originally discovered over a hundred years ago. Here's how it works. When excited hydrogen atoms starts to cool down, it emits ultraviolet light at very specific frequencies that are directly related to the energy levels of the electrons inside the atom itself. Today we refer to these as Lyman lines, with the lines themselves forming something that looks like this. Now this wavelength is in a unit known as angstrom, but it can also be obviously converted into nanometers. This whole thing is usually referred to as the Lyman series, and interestingly enough, what Lyman discovered is that they also possess a kind of a limit you see right here. Which meant that the hydrogen atoms will never actually emit any light below this particular wavelength. It's about 912 angstrom or about 9.12 nanometers. And since most of the universe is basically made out of hydrogen, especially early universe, the scientists realized early on that by looking at these Lyman series, they could actually start to analyze various galaxies and of course various stars across the universe. For example, it allowed us to categorize various galaxies depending on the activity, also depending on the types of stars in them. So certain stars that are very young, they will actually produce a certain Lyman series and a certain type of emissions not visible in other galaxies. And by using these techniques and by using the analysis of Lyman series from nearby objects, the scientists have also found a way to basically determine ages of different galaxies. So for example, we know that the hydrogen signature usually increases quite dramatically as the stellar population ages, but then starts to drop dramatically once the galaxy is slightly older than a billion years or so. And by collecting the data from thousands and thousands of galaxies, the scientists have worked out how to use these Lyman series to generally get the age of a typical galaxy. 
So for example, some of the early galaxies that have a lot of these really massive, very, very hot stars burning a lot of gas, will burn a lot of gas very quickly and will thus contribute to creating a much stronger alignment series signal, which can then be combined with some of the other observations to estimate the age. But over the years, while the scientists were looking at these galaxies in different types of light, they also realized that some of these galaxies have very peculiar features. Some of them also tend to kind of disappear at certain frequencies or to have what's known as the Lyman break. Here's what all of this would look like for one of these galaxies studied in this paper. Suddenly, the frequencies just kind of disappear. Which if you look at the paper, you'll see that it actually happens for all of these six galaxies. And one of the reasons this happens is really because of where these galaxies were located. A lot of these early galaxies were essentially surrounded by neutral hydrogen, this very opaque, very difficult to see through gas that sort of resembled fog. And this gas was very likely everywhere until all of the early stars and early galaxies started to emit this light, which then transformed it into ionized hydrogen, the hydrogen that we have today. This is usually what's referred to as the reionization era. And so in pretty much all of these really distant galaxies, this higher energy is completely invisible. It's absorbed by the neutral hydrogen gas. And this break is of course right at this limit right here, the Lyman limit. Generally, discovering such a galaxy just means that we found something really, really, really far away. But since the alignment limit happens in the ultraviolet light at the frequency of 9.12 nanometers, it would hypothetically be very difficult for us to see these galaxies, mostly because we don't really have very powerful ultraviolet telescopes located on planet Earth. But we do have a lot of infrared telescopes. But since the universe is expanding and since the light is always redshifted depending on the distance, the alignment break from these galaxies transforms from being in the far ultraviolet to usually near infrared. Which means that we can do two things here. First of all, we can obviously discover them using various infrared telescopes, such as the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, also known as ALMA. And second of all, by determining the frequency of that observed Lyman break versus the predicted Lyman break, we can then determine the redshift and thus determine the distance. And so that's kind of how the scientists do it nowadays. They find this distant galaxy that has a very obvious Lyman break, usually in near infrared. They then compare it to what they should be seeing. And so here's an example of the galaxy used in this study, which then allows them to determine the redshift and thus the approximate distance to these galaxies. And then by combining this with the Lyman series that we've studied with other galaxies and other stars, they can then work out the age of all of this as well. And so by using those six galaxies and by determining their distance and determining their approximate age, the scientists were able to work out the approximate age of some of these first stars and to also create this beautiful visualization you see right here showing us how the early dawn or the early cosmic dawn very likely happened. According to them, the first stars appeared somewhere right here, anywhere from maybe 250 million years to possibly about 350 million years after the initial creation of the universe after the beginning of the Big Bang. Although this is, for now at least, just a preliminary discovery based on these six galaxies. It's very likely that we might be able to discover some of the other galaxies even earlier than that, with some of the stars that are even younger. For now though, these six galaxies do suggest that the dawn of the universe, the cosmic dawn, very likely happened around this time. Which also means that the galaxies that we've discovered, these six distant galaxies, are anywhere from about 200 to maybe 300 million years old. They are still pretty young, but not that young. And this is of course something that's really important for some of the future missions because we need to have some sort of a basis for future analysis. So for example, as I mentioned, James Webb Telescope is expected to be able to see even farther, and so chances are the discoveries from this telescope are going to help us either to prove this or to possibly discover something completely new, completely unexpected. But at the moment, the study implies that the cosmic dawn most likely began about 250 million years after the beginning of Big Bang. Notice how I didn't say the Big Bang, because the Big Bang never really finished. It's still going on even today. But that's something we'll discuss in some of the future videos, so make sure to subscribe. Either way though, this is a really, really interesting study, and to some extent it's a study that examines who we are. 
As the scientists in this paper mentioned, since we are made of cosmic dust, this literally allows us to see the true origin of everything in the universe, including of course ourselves. And by studying this early light, we'll be able to understand where everything in the universe came from and when it all began. For now though, we just don't really have any telescopes capable of seeing this far back in time. We'll hopefully be able to do this in the next decade or so, but not yet. Anyway, on that note, check out the study and all of the relevant data and links in the description below. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.